Rotomoto is brought to you by O'Neill. Southwick marks the midpoint of the 2022 season, meaning only six race weekends left before the biggest one of the year, MX of Nations. This year's event will be held here in the States at the iconic Redbud, and wouldn't you know it, as soon as Redbud is in the rear view, there is an uptick in conversation about who should make the team. I'm Donnie from Rotomoto, and in this video, let's take a look at the usual suspects and a few that might surprise you, talk about why and why not these riders should be racing under the Star Spangled Banner. Let's get the elephant out of the room, and that's Eli Tomac on the 450. He's been hands down the most dominant rider over the last six seasons, and he just went 1-1 at Red Bud, becoming the first 450 rider to have two overalls this season. 2022 Eli could be the best Tomac we have ever seen. After 26 mains and motos, Eli has 12 race wins and 18 podiums. The star racing Yamaha looks to be the cream of the manufacturer crop, and the Colorado native has already verbally shown interest in racing come September, so you can call him a lock, right? Well, let us not forget that he suffered a significant knee injury in April and has been racing back to fit. It looks fine, but he's still just one bad dab away from re-aggravating or making it worse. He also just signed a lucrative Supercross only deal and is signed up to race the opening round of World Supercross in October. If Eli puts it all together and becomes the first rider to win both titles since 2015, will he have enough left in the tank for what is arguably the biggest race of them all once it's all said and done? It could go either way, but right now, Eli is on my team with a C on his chest, Captain Tomac, the happiest we've ever seen him, the fastest he's ever looked, and on a program that would throw their entire weight behind him, the number three is a no-brainer. I would be remiss if I didn't next mention the guy holding the red plate in the class, and that's Chase Sexton. As great as Eli's been, Chase currently holds a 7 point advantage over him, winning 3 motos this year and finishing either 1st or 2nd in 9 of 10, including going 2-2 at the home track last weekend. Imagine Chase closes it out strong and takes the title home over Eli, how would you possibly explain him getting snubbed to ride for the red, white, and blue? Well, for one, he's never raced on such a grand stage. In fact, Chase hasn't ever raced against prime international competition. He is young and prone to silly mistakes, including two this year alone that cost him additional race wins. There is just something about an accomplished veteran that just makes you feel good about a national team, and Moto is no exception. But who would be a better option? No one wants to race for the US more than Justin Barsha, but he has only had a single win in 40 years and isn't even in the top five in points right now. Jason Anderson looks faster than ever on that monster Kawasaki 450, but his inconsistency and silly mistakes likely cost him a Supercross title this year. Ryan Dungey would make an amazing story, but let's be realistic, you don't take five years off and then race to nations. Keep it simple, Chase is young, fast, confident, hungry, and most importantly, literally leading the series right now, pencil him in at the open spot. And finally, the 250 spot. The heir apparent here is Justin Cooper. He's been arguably the most consistent and most accomplished American-born 250 rider of the past three years. He is a great starter, came up just short of the title in 2021, and is riding the absolute best bike available in the small bore package. But he's hurt or at least healing. His results have been all over the place this year. He's fourth in points and has finished outside the top five as often as he's been in it. Even his otherworldly starts have come back down to earth this season. But who else would you trust in the spot? Jeremy Martin would have been a great pick five years ago, or at least if he could stay healthy and hungry. RJ and Mosman both have the speed, but they can never seem to put together two consecutive motos and would be a major liability in a race for the country. Kitchen and Hammaker are balls out fast, and I think both of them could race for the U.S. eventually, but not this year. You can't put that kind of pressure on these kind of kids, but let's look outside the box. Why doesn't one of the big guys drop down? It's worked in the past. It could work again. America is in a slump, and we need a win. What about Christian Craig? He's on the same bike as Cooper and just wrapped up an indoor title on it just two months ago, but contrary to popular belief, Christian is not great on a 250, not outdoors at least, and he's never raced the Star 250 outdoors. In fact, CC only has eight outdoor starts in the small class in the last six years. He has zero moto wins and has only cracked the top 10 overall once since 2016. That is just not going to happen. But why not Justin Barsha? He has a lot of the same flaws as Christian. Most notably that he has no recent experience racing a 250 outdoor, having moved up to the big bikes a whole decade ago after winning back-to-back -back Supercross titles and finishing runner-up outdoors. Barsha has ridden for Team USA 
four times already, so he knows the drill better than anyone. But I think what makes Barsha really tick is how he rides and how he would bring the fan base together. No one is as hard nosed as Barsha. I mean, they don't call him Bam Bam for nothing. He races on the rev limiter and will be right at home on the 250. Will Hahn has him clocking in at 155 pounds, which is pretty prime for the high revving gas gas 250. But the real dark horse here is the other guy we left off the 450 squad. Jason Anderson. El Hombre even took to Twitter to respond to a fan that asked him about it, and Jason verbally committed to the idea, at least in his own team fried kind of way. No doubt he's fast, and obviously he would stay team green, which would put him on a bike we know can win at Red Bud. Anderson has already raced for his country twice, including a modal win at MX of Nations in 2016. But as fast as Anderson is, it's hard to give him the green light considering how paltry his outdoor career has gone. He just notched his first overall this season on a 450 and had a grand total of zero in the little class. In theory, Jason seems hype, but he just doesn't have the pedigree to back it up. If I'm Roger DeCoster, a Belgian man somehow in charge of the US team, I gotta give that third spot to Bam Bam Justin Barsha. With a sea of wild cards to choose from, no one can deny the Bam Bam is the ultimate wild card. I have told you what my MXDN team would be, but now it is your turn. Let me know in the comments below who you have racing what bike, and don't forget to hit the like button, and be sure to subscribe to Roto Motor for more breaking news and analysis like this. The number one way to help get more eyes on the video is to tell the platform that this was a good one. And if you value the content I put out, please consider joining me on Patreon. For just about $1 per week, you help me continue to make this content for you, and are also entered to win race shoes and autograph memorabilia from your favorite riders. Up for grabs for the month of July is a Dean Wilson O'Neill jersey autographed by the man himself. Thanks as always for watching Rotomoto. My name is Donnie. Keep it pinned to the weekend.